Today is the 14th of March, which means it's Pi Day, and welcome to 29. <laughs> things to do on Pi Day is to find an interesting way of calculating Pi. And today I'm going to do it with the circle and square. So all this confetti that has landed scattered throughout this image should hopefully help us calculate Pi by working out the ratio of confetti in the circle to confetti in the square. So first up let's count the circle. Inside the circle, 17. So 59 inside the circle plus 17. So 59 inside the circle and 76 in the rest of the square. So if we punch that in, we have the so circle had 59, 76. So pi should equal 4 times circle over square. So, circle over square plus 36, 0.776 times 4 equals 3.105. So close but not perfect. So I thought, let's try this again with a bigger circle and a bigger confetti cannon. So this is about 1 meter tall holds a bottle full of dry ice in the bottom, stack the rest of the way with ping pong balls, and hopefully we'll soon go off landing in the circle. So the first method I tried, I originally tried a method using PVC pipes, pumping air into it, and firing it off with a um, solenoid valve. Unfortunately, I didn't really have enough go to be able to fire a lot of ping pong balls at once. So I've gone for this method, and we'll see how it works. So for the first test, I'm gonna try a smaller bottle with only a few ping pong balls. We'll see how it goes. I'll pop up. Now I play the waiting game. Hope this doesn't take too long. Twenty minutes later. So there we go. Did not blow up, but if I can have it heating up faster. Perfect. So that was more than I was expecting, but I'm gonna give this a shot again anyway. With a bigger bottle. One hour later. Just one quick safety note. Dry ice is not a safe thing to play with if you don't know what you're doing. This is the remnants. It's very shredded. Luckily I didn't have my hands on this one. But yeah, it can be dangerous. It can also burn your skin if you leave it on your hands too long. So just make sure you're being careful if you ever use some. Seems that much CO2 wasn't a good idea. It's uh, blown the cap off the end of, or the end of the cap off. So this cannon's no longer gonna work. I can even see marks inside. I'm not sure if you can see that. The black bit there, where are uh, the cap and everything exploded onto the inside of this? But it was interesting. Right, I'm not giving up that easy, so I'm going to use one of the smaller bottles again with the bottom one cap so it can vent some gas out. And we're going to give this a shot with all the ping pong balls. Oh! No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> At least we caught that on film. Gonna give another try. Maybe more dry ice and... Look at something. 
All the water thing stuff now. Come on, you can hold out long enough? No, you can't. Shapes the balls on top. Not as successful as I would have liked, but hey, the first experiment, pretty close, 3.10, so not too far off. Um, might as well just do a couple of other things you can do with dry ice, like throw it in the pool. I mean, one cool thing you can do with it is it's really useful for making your drink look cool. I just started off with a regular glass of Red Bull. Add a bit of dry ice and it gives this cool like brewing brewing like potion sort of look. Another interesting fact about dry ice is that when it sublimates to carbon dioxide it becomes denser than air and therefore we're able to pour it. So I'm going to put this candle out just by pouring carbon dioxide on it. Handful of dry ice in some dish like soapy water. Well, that's it for this episode of 29. I've got to clean all this stuff up. Yeah, it's been fun. So, uh, didn't quite get the cannon to work, but everything else worked. It was pretty fun. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, comment down below what else you think I should do. Uh, probably not what else I should do with the dry ice because it's going to be gone by the time this video is up. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.